The Omen franchise kicked off back in 1976 with one of the best religious horror movies out there, and with the release of the confusingly titled The First Omen, there are now six total entries in the series, so let's rank them. Good evening. My name's Evan, and welcome to Rockland Graves. We did it! I started covering the Omen franchise back at the start of January, and this video concludes my coverage of the series. Now that we've got the whole picture of all six of these movies, I'm gonna go through them in order of worst to best in my opinion, and I welcome you all to sound off in the comments and share your own rankings as well. Keep it civil, though. We're all here for the love of horror, and it's okay if you don't agree with me or someone you see in the comments. Disagreeing and sharing that is one thing, being a dick is another. No need for any long intro here, let's just get to the ranking. Before that though, I want to thank my wonderful Patreon supporters and YouTube channel members. These videos take a lot of time and energy to make and the extra support really helps to keep things moving. If you're interested in getting some bonus material and accessing private supporter only polls or getting early access to the big videos, consider supporting me on either platform. There will be some spoilers in this list by the way, just a heads up. I should move that over a bit, shouldn't I? There we go, give you a better view. Coming in at number six, we have Omen 4, The Awakening, released in 1991. Good God almighty, I, I mean, I, look, I'm not sure what I was expecting from a made-for-TV Omen sequel, but this movie made me feel sorry for how much I bashed Exorcist 2. The first three movies make a pretty fun trilogy that I thought closed off in a grand and satisfying way, and then Omen 4 was shit out with one of the worst scripts I've ever seen, horrendous acting, pacing that makes The Lodge feel like John Wick, a bland and boring color palette, and the second time the series basically retreaded the general outline of the first movie's story. This movie seriously offers nothing that makes it feel like an even remotely compelling follow-up to Damien Thorne's story, and while I might have been able to look past some of the ridiculous flaws in the story and acting department, if there were at least some entertaining or creative death scenes, there's not anything anywhere near that to be found here. It's painfully boring, and I was deeply relieved when it ended. Thankfully, since it's such a tacked-on sequel to a trilogy that closed itself off well, this movie can be completely ignored. I don't see any reason to recommend watching it unless you're just morbidly curious, and I don't know if I ever see myself watching it again. I, I wish I could get back the hour and 40 minutes of my life that were wasted on this thing. Coming in at number five, we have the remake of The Omen released in 2006. This is a really weird one to talk about because it's like, it's a very copy paste remake. This is like beat for beat of the original movie with the most minute little changes to try and pass it off as something new, which is really frustrating. It's an absolutely pointless remake that does nothing new to warrant its existence. I think some of the character portrayals are maybe a little more relatable than the ones in the original, but none of that matters because this movie just feels so lazy. The acting is fine, it's, it's not bad at all, but that's really the only thing to compare between the two movies since this is just the same fucking thing. Here's the thing about beat for beat remaking a movie. If you directly copy the story and structure of a good narrative, then from some angle, your movie still has a good story with good structure. Like, if someone hadn't seen the original and they watched the remake, they'd probably have a good time with it because The Omen is a good story. I'd argue they'd probably have a better time with the original since its you know, tone, atmosphere, and music are so much better. And there are some really stupid jump scares added into the remake, but overall, I can still see someone walking away from this thing thinking they just watched a pretty decent horror movie. I had a bunch of people leave comments when I put up my video about the remake saying that The Omen 2006 was the first one they saw and it's what got them into watching the original movie or they like it because it's something that helped them get into horror so clearly there is an audience for it. But I would never say The Omen remake has a good story because it's just plagiarism with permission. So much so that the dude who wrote the script was denied a writing credit by the WGA, so David Seltzer, the man who wrote the original, is credited as the writer of the remake despite having no involvement. It's watchable, but I, I would never say that it's good because full-on copying something good doesn't make you that. It makes you lazy, uninspired, and bland. 
and that's what this remake is. Coming in at number four, we have Damien Omen 2, released in 1978. It seems like I'm sort of in the minority on preferring the third movie over the second, but I didn't find this movie did quite enough story-wise to fully justify itself. Don't get me wrong, I don't think it's a terrible movie. There's a lot to appreciate in the sequel, like the really amped up and crazy death scenes. The biggest thing for me, it's just got a really nice vibe to it. This is a great movie to throw on on a Saturday morning with a bowl of cereal and just have some fun with. At the end of the day though, the majority of this movie is spent on characters catching up on information that we've had since the first movie. We the audience already know that Damien is the Antichrist, so it's not nearly as compelling watching him and everyone around him figure that out when we already went through that whole thing in the first movie and it was handled much better there. I hate when stories spend a bunch of time with characters slowly figuring out something that we're already aware of because it doesn't let me get properly invested in the story. It's just a very inactive and in a lot of ways inconsequential sequel that didn't move the story forward much from where the first movie ended and you know, that's why I think I didn't enjoy it as much as a lot of others did. I care a lot more about the story in a movie like this than I do the Final Destination death scenes, and I think that's where this movie has the most to offer, so if that's what you're looking for, I think you'll have a good time. It's fine, and it's entertaining, like, it's not a bad movie by any means, but it's my least favorite of the trilogy. Coming in at number three, we have Omen 3, The Final Conflict. It seems like the general consensus is that this is people's least favorite of the original trilogy, which is why I was very pleasantly surprised to find how much more I enjoyed this than I did the second one. A whole lot of what I said I wished Omen 2 was is here, from Damien properly being involved in the political world to a far more active story, and a lot of that's thanks to the fact that this movie wastes absolutely no time on retreading ground. This is a brand new chapter in the story that feels a hell of a lot more significant, and seeing Damien operate with more agency in the story was a lot more enjoyable to me than another movie of strange things happening around him until the thing we already knew at the start of the movie is revealed. I enjoyed Sam Neill's performance as a grown-up Damien and felt like he had a good balance between the soft-spoken, well-liked politician and the son of Satan that he let loose whenever he had the chance. The movie pushes things pretty far when he gets his followers to just start murdering newborn babies en masse, and while you might think they'll get stopped before they can, not the case. There are some really high stakes in this one. Then you've got the priest from the Subiaco Monastery hunting him down with the daggers of Megiddo and trying to assassinate him, and the return of that dark religious imagery that was basically completely missing in the second movie, and you've got what feels like a proper concluding chapter to the story of the Antichrist. The location scouting is also really great in this movie with a ton of variety and great landscapes that fit the tone well. It's not perfect by any means, it could have done with a good bit more character development and some more subtlety to make it feel more ominous, but I just found it to be a really fun and exciting movie. It's candy horror, but it's a good time. Coming in at number two, we have The First Omen, released in 2024. As I had expected, this movie's been a pretty divisive prequel, mostly because of the retcons made to the lore of the original movie with having Damien birthed by a human instead of a jackal. I don't mind the change, and I loved the motivations added to the church for why they wanted to bring about the Antichrist. Aside from all that though, this isn't just my favorite Omen sequel, it's my favorite horror movie of the year so far, which if you told me that a prequel to the Omen released in 2024 was gonna be that good a year ago, I would not have believed you. This thing was such a huge surprise from the moment I saw that great trailer that made me a hell of a lot more interested than I ever thought I would be, and then getting treated to this very creative, surprisingly stylistic and well-crafted film was such a treat. Nell Tiger Free in the lead role of Margaret was so well cast and gave such a varied performance, hitting all the right notes on the wide spectrum of emotions she had to portray. The scene where she's basically growing twin babies inside of her in like two minutes after the car crash was one of the coolest physical performances I've seen in a while, and I loved her commitment to going all out on the animalistic side of what was happening. The score from Mark Corvin is absolutely incredible, as well as the sound design, resulting in an overall soundscape that ranges from a more classical feel to really ex like experimental, dreamy tones. Arkasha Stevenson has immediately become one director that I will be in the seat for day one, no matter what, because you can just feel the inspiration through every frame of this movie. Her work is incredible, and I cannot wait to see what she does next. This movie left off in a way that seemed to be hinting at a sequel, which is intriguing to me, because with the talent that Stevenson showed, I think a story parallel with the timeline of the original movie, continuing on what happened with what happened in this one, could be interesting. I had an amazing time with the first Omen, and it's easily my favorite sequel in the franchise. Coming in at number one, we have The Omen, released in 1976. Shocker, I know! 
Well, I had a good bit of fun with the trilogy that this became, and I thoroughly enjoyed the prequel. I still think this movie works best on its own, and it's an incredible watch. It was one of the earlier horror movies that I saw when my dad showed it to me as a kid, and it was very memorable, but it wasn't until I revisited it as an adult that I could really appreciate just how good this thing really is. There's this great, dark, foreboding feel to this movie as we watch Robert Thorne slowly learn of his adoptive son's true nature and the conspiracy that brought Damien into his life. You really grow to sympathize with him throughout the movie, and once he's faced with a task that would tear any responsible person in two, it hits hard because the movie does a great job at putting you in his shoes. Gregory Peck gives an impeccable performance as this strong-headed politician, which is what makes his panic and dread as the movie goes on feel a lot more impactful. When he realizes how out of his control the situation really is, you feel it. The movie's great visually with this fantastic melding of religious imagery and the everyday working world, which evokes those themes of this evil rising to power through politics. Not to mention the absolutely stellar score from Jerry Goldsmith throughout the entire trilogy, but it's really in this first movie where I think it shines the best. This is just a really tight, focused movie that blends the world of politics and religion so well and carries it all on the shoulders of a very compelling mystery and fantastic performances from all of the cast. It's one of the greats, and I don't think any sequel in this franchise can surpass it because it's such a focused and original movie. So there we go. We've now gone through the entire Omen franchise, and later this year I absolutely want to revisit the first Omen and do a more in-depth video on it because there's just so much more that I want to talk about in detail, so We'll be coming back to the franchise for that at some point down the line. Also, this coming Friday, I'll be streaming Lucius, a really goofy video game version of a story similar to Damien Thorne's to close this coverage off, and I'm really excited for that. Thank you all for joining me over the last few months as we've gone through this franchise, and I'm so glad we get to close it off with such a huge bang in the prequel that I can't wait to revisit. Until then, thank you for stopping by Rockland Graves. I hope you've enjoyed your stay.